hello to my lovely subscribers and anyone else who might have found this because they're interested in the Tuto Tondo range of perfumes. Um, I am making this in London. I got these. Uh, they're not easy to find, to be honest, in the UK. I think they're probably much easier to get hold of in Europe. But um, I got these from a website called frmoda.com. Now, I think that's an Italian website. Happily, they ship to the UK. It's not the cheapest delivery, but I have to say it's one of the best deliveries I've had from Europe. Um, they were incredibly quick. They were extremely well organized. I got updates uh, the whole way along. And they, I mean, they arrived so much quicker than I was expecting them to. So it was totally worth the price. And because... Um, these normally retail for 100 mil of the, these are all EDTs, I believe. Um, these normally retail for about 33 pounds and they are normally on special offer for about 26. So that's 26 pounds for 100 mil of quite a light, pretty, generally quite gourmand leaning perfumes. Um, and the other good thing about the, I mean, I'm not sponsored. I paid for all these myself. <laughs> I'm just telling you because they're quite hard to find. They also allow you to, if you do a proper order, they'll allow you to add um, sample sizes and they have a massive range of samples that you can choose from. I was expecting these to just come in plain little sample sprayers, but they, they've come in these proper Tuto Tondo ca carded samples um, and you can add them completely for free. I wasn't trying to take advantage of them, so I only ordered the two that I was interested in because there's a few in this range that I'm not particularly interested in. So I'll talk to you about the samples at the end. These are the full bottles I went for. And they also chucked in very generously a bunch of, I think these are shower gels. Yeah, they're all shower gels. Um, so I've got a lovely range of shower gels as well. Perfect for traveling. So let's start with these 100ml bottles. I will move these out of the way and I will start with Castagna. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, and I apologise if I'm not. <laughs> this is the chestnut perfume. So I've only seen a couple of people on YouTube in the English language speaking about Tuto Tondo perfumes, and that is um, Delicious Delights and Perfume Nest. Um, so I think probably I'm a little bit more of a fuss pot than either of uh, those two reviewers, and... There are some of these that I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to like them. But then they're quite interesting to me. Now, I find these perfumes um, still quite perfumey. They definitely are gourmand, but they still have something in them that has a real perfumey smell. Most of them anyway. Um, I'll get the bottle out. It's a pretty cool bottle. There it is. All the way from Italy. That is Castagna make sure that's in um okay so the other cool thing that's that's nice about these is they have the notes on the back of the boxes which is really really helpful and i'm going to give you the notes that are actually from tuto tondo rather than giving you the notes from for Grantica because they don't always seem to be complete and i think sometimes they miss elements of from what i can tell of these perfumes that are really quite important to how they come across and how they actually smell. So if we start with Castagna, this one is top notes, bergamot and iris, heart notes of chestnut and cloves, uh, heliotrope and maple syrup, base notes, tonka bean, guyac wood, sandalwood, moss, vanilla and vetiver. So this one I am not keen on. Um, and it's not because I think it's a bad perfume. I'm just coming up against the smoky wood with what is actually a very sweet maple syrup and quite an obvious iris. So I would describe Castagna personally as a maple syrup and iris perfume with a lot of smoky wood. Um, it's quite unusual, I would say. I, I do What I do think about this one is that if you like uh, by the fireplace, for instance, and you like that sweet smoky smell, but you found that the vanilla was a bit too powerful in that one or that it was just generally a bit too strong, the thing with the Tuto Tondo perfumes is they are actually quite light. These lasted on me for quite a long time, 
but they are not really strong perfumes. They do smell like they are designed to be worn in slightly warmer weather. And therefore, you know, they're not going to be as thick. They're more transparent, but they're still quite sweet. This one, it's got a noticeable, um, a very noticeable iris, like I said, but a very noticeable maple syrup, which I think is super pretty. But there's something a bit medicinal about the Guyac wood mixed with the cloves that creates this kind of smoky iris that I can't quite get along with personally. So this is not one that I'm going to keep, but it was really interesting to smell it. And the other thing I'll say is it does have a kind of festive smell to it. There's something about, I guess, because it's chestnut, right? There's something about that hint of chestnut going on with the sweetness and the smokiness that has a slight Christmassy feel to it. So um, I think if you like the idea of a smoky iris chestnut, you know, and you don't mind woody perfumes, then Castagna might be a really nice one for you. So next up, tiramisu. I was absolutely sure this would be the one that I would really head, fall head over heels for because tiramisu is my absolute favourite dessert. And in terms of a gourmand perfume, I couldn't really think of anything that was going to be better than tiramisu. Interestingly enough, this is not staying with me either. So I told you I am a fuss pot. If you don't normally watch my videos and you haven't seen me before, I'm called Skin Sense for Fuss Spots because I'm quite fussy about perfumes and what I wear, despite the fact that I have over 200 perfumes. Um, so this one, the issue really for me with this, and I will also say this bottle actually did leak a little bit on the way over from Italy. So it's a little bit sticky and... Um, yeah, it looks like I've used more of this one, but I, I haven't. It's literally just because it leaked. But um, I know lots of people are going to absolutely love this perfume. There's there's absolutely no way that people won't really, <laughs> really be digging this. But there's something in here, and I think it is a gourmand, but it definitely has a perfumey element to it. Um and I can really struggle sometimes when something smells like literal food, but then has obvious florals, unless it's something that I would actually eat, like, you know, um, rose water, for instance, that kind of thing. So there's certain flowers, violets, like you get candied violets, candied rose, that kind of thing. But this, this has a different edge to it. So I'll give you the notes and I'll tell you how I personally think this smells. So it's pink berries cocoa and milk cream and pink pepper in the top now on Fragrantica they don't say that there's pink berries and I think that is quite an important note here um I think they maybe have like some whipped cream or something on there that has some berries on top but I can smell the pink berries in this it it's obviously there um and then in the heart you've got cocoa butter tiramisu um and then base notes of benzoin Caca oh cocoa sorry beeswax orchid and madagascar vanilla so i would say because i do like benzoin quite a lot and it gives me quite a kind of gingerbread smell that i really enjoy but i can smell the orchid here and that is what i think is making this smell more perfumey to me in a way that doesn't really appeal and i don't really get much in the way of coffee from this i do not believe that this smells anything like a tiramisu I definitely think it smells cakey. It smells sweet and it's a bit creamy. Also, I mean, I've never had a tiramisu that has berries with it. And that's not a combination that I would enjoy in actual eating tiramisu. So I don't particularly enjoy the pink berry smell that is mixing here. Um, with that, I mean, sweet, creamy, cakey smell. But like I said, there's not really much in the way of coffee here. So if you don't like coffee, but you like gourmand, and you might still really like this. Um, I would say, yeah, it's missing the bitterness. That's what it is. It's missing the booziness, the richness and the bitterness that you get from a real tiramisu. And um, I'd say this has more of a like, if you think of like a coffee and walnut cake, like that's like quite a British thing. So it's like a, a quite a dense sponge cake. And then you might have like a buttercream throughout um, and it will just have a little bit of coffee or maybe some coffee icing, that kind of thing. But then with like a big bunch of like smashed up berries with that as well. So it's more that kind of thing. I think it's very sugary sweet. It's quite light. Again, it's another one that has that um, uh, kind of slightly transparent feel to it, even though it's very sweet. 
it definitely lasts as a sweet skin scent but i do think that most of these do feel a bit like a skin scent and again they're italian so they're probably not supposed to be really really strong um but yeah this this is uh, there's definitely a biscuity cakey smell when you first spray it and then you get the fruitiness then it gets creamier and then it is a tiny bit waxy in the dry down from that lovely beeswax but there's just something about this one that that i find difficult to wear so this is not one that's going to stay with me either because like i really wanted a bit more of a boozy like zabaloni kind of smell um i've probably pronounced that wrong as well my italian is appalling so i apologize if i have but uh i just yeah it's just not quite for me it's not quite tiramisu but i know that a lot a lot of people are going to absolutely love this one like yeah it's gonna it's probably the most popular one from the range i imagine And then we have riso. So I do sometimes like a rice note. Um, I kind of, I know that it has that kind of savory tone. So for instance, is it Eau Papier by Diptyque? That one has a really, really strong rice note. And this one, it's not as strong at all, but it definitely also shares a similar rice note. Let's take this out of the box. So <laughs> riso. This is another one that I think the notes on Fragrantico are very, very brief and don't at all help with explaining what this smells like. Um, I have heard someone say this smells like a rice pudding, but I think you might be a little bit disappointed if you actually expected it to properly smell like a rice pudding. But it definitely has like maybe a spoonful of rice pudding in here. So it has a slightly savoury, so, sort of that slightly strange smell of cooked rice um which yeah like i said it's quite savory it's quite foody um but there's something quite i mean i i i don't like saying the word stale but i think definitely anything with a rice note that i've smelt where the rice is really obvious i do think it has a slightly strange stale smell but that tends not to last it turns into something else it becomes more creamy and it just develops into something a little bit more beautiful um so the notes in riso are raspberry mandarin and ozone the heart notes are frangipani steamed rice um and rose and then the base notes are amber woods moss and vanilla so again this is another one that has notes in it that are quite perfumey rather than being gourmand and you definitely do get that impression it doesn't entirely just smell like food but it's light it's breezy it's a little bit fruity definitely you can definitely sense that raspberry and mandarin and whatever ozone is i'm not entirely sure how to even represent that note but it is light and airy definitely um there's that the perfumey side is from the woods and the flowers so if you imagine you're going to eat some raspberries and you've spritzed them with like mandarin juice and then they're on top of a spoonful of creamy rice pudding, then that's kind of getting you into the sweet element of this. And then if you're also just drinking that, uh, eating that with a glass of water, so it's like not too thick, you know, it's quite uh, watery and fresh and nice. It's not too like cloying. But then you're you're doing all of this in a garden that has flowers and woods and moss everywhere, you know, and it's maybe on a on a cool spring morning. So it's dewy and you can really smell the garden around you. Then that's how I would describe this one. I think this gets nicer and nicer as it dries down. This is one that I actually quite enjoyed wearing. This one's going to stay in my collection for a little bit. I'm going to see how I get on with this one. I've given it a full wear test. I have given a full wear test to um, Castagna and Tiramisu as well. But um, those two I found quite uncomfortable to wear. I didn't feel the same about Riso. I quite liked wearing it. But it is a tricky one because if I'm in a mood for something a bit gourmand and I smell this one, it does smell quite perfumey to me. In fact, these all kind of have a bit of a house DNA when I'm smelling them together for this review now. They definitely seem to have a kind of base DNA that has this kind of perfumey smell. Um, 
and I, I think it works fine in this one but for me it doesn't work so well in the others so anyway um <laughs> that's Riso this one's staying with me for a while and I'm going to really enjoy testing it out so now if we have a look at the samples we've got Fico de India here and I didn't want to take too much of a chance on this one um I thought this one might be a bit more tricky for me but I really wanted to smell it so that's such a such lovely little samples honestly I think Tito Tondo is so cute so I wanted to smell this one because I it's been compared to and it is the top comparison I believe of Moonlight in Heaven from Killian now there are elements about Moonlight in Heaven that I really really enjoy and then there's other elements that I really don't enjoy at all um but I think that's just because Killian, again, is another house that I really struggle with. Sometimes I think they might use aroma chemicals that irritate me. Um, I mean, to be fair, that might be what I'm smelling when I say this Tuto Tondo have a house DNA. They might use certain aroma chemicals that I recognise in all of the perfumes. Um, but also Killian's horribly expensive. So I was like, that's never going to be a perfume I would buy. And... I don't particularly like buying kind of the dupe house versions of things, you know, and I do have one of that and I was like, eh, it's OK. So this is interesting, though. It definitely does have some crossovers with Moonlight in Heaven. Um, and it's got some some stuff in it that's so pretty. All right. So top notes here are orange and fig, heart notes of cyclamen and peach, base notes of coconut milk and moss. So it definitely starts off smelling like Moonlight in Heaven. It's definitely got some some similar kind of profile happening. And then the more it, more it kind of dries down, you get more bitterness from the orange and like a mossy scent. Um, and then it, it starts to smell a little bit like green neroli and orange peel to me. But then it comes back round again <laughs> to smell a little bit more like Killian again. But then it's like there's quite a good dose of fig in the deep dry down. And then you start getting almost like almost like a little kind of mixture of moonlight in heaven with Diptyque's Philosicus, you know, like a little bit of those two things together. I think it's unisex. It's interesting. This one is definitely pretty. I do like this one. There is obviously now a part of me that wishes I'd got a full bottle of Fico de India rather than um, <laughs> of the chestnut one. But, you know, that's just life. There is still something in this that's quite um, perfumey again. And I think that's probably because there's like a noticeable moss note here. But it's really very pretty. It doesn't have... It doesn't ha It doesn't list a rice note. Um it doesn't it doesn't list a rice note but i think because it's got that coconut milk it has got that kind of same feel the way that um riso does but without that sort of slightly stale biscuity smell that you get like sometimes with rice yeah this one's pretty this is one that i'm sniffing now and i'm thinking yeah i i kind of regret that this is the one i got a sample of rather than a bottle but yeah, I think this will be one I enjoy wearing. I think it's got a very pretty dry down. And I think if you if you want an actual dupe of Moonlight in Heaven, then this is not going to be for you. But if you just like the idea of that perfume, there's things you like about it and you don't mind having something that isn't identical, this is a really good affordable alternative. I think it's super pretty. Yeah, definitely. I think that's my second favourite after Riso. That's a really nice one. So then the last sample I got is this one this is spritz vene oh venazio i'm again sorry about the pronunciation okay so let's open this one up a very pretty i wonder if a lot of their perfumes are based on like cocktails and stuff um they do like to use the word cocktail so i'm going to spray this one out this one i'm not mad for this one it's kind of fun but I don't think it's very wearable. That's what I'll say about this. Uh, so spritz. 
Venecio. Veneciano. Veneciano? Is that how you say it? Spritz Veneciano. So, Spritz Veneciano. Woo! Okay. <laughs> this one, there's something about this one that makes it feel stronger than all the other ones. Um, oof. This is an interesting situation, this one. So, the notes here, our top notes are Prosecco, Elemi, and Lemon. Heart notes of Orange, Divana, and Rosemary. Base notes of Amber, Moss, and Vanilla. So, again, it's... It's like actual fruitiness, but it's also like quite perfumey. There's a lot of Divana in here. The closest thing I've smelt to this, oddly enough, is in one of the more recent ones from Lush that was called New Romantics, which definitely smelt, it smelt like, um, I remembered what it was called at the time, but a, a very super concentrated orange cordial, orange squash. Um, called like sun something or another and this has a bit of that but then it's also got the amber moss and vanilla so it kind of starts to change up the thing is someone's called this tango they said it smells like tango and I kind of understand what they're saying because there's definitely a lot of orange in here but the divana and the rosemary are making this soapy um and then the amber and the moss and vanilla is making it perfumey. The vanilla is coming through in a slight a way I find slightly odd. Um, it's like soapy and balsamic. But it's also fizzy. And it kind of reminds me of Barocca tablets, if you know what those are. Those effervescent tablets full of vitamin C. Um, yeah, I just wouldn't find this at all wearable in the same way I couldn't wear New Romantics. I feel like it's a bit of a headache in a bottle, to be honest. But it's kind of fun to smell it. But it might be better in a, in a candle, if you see what I mean. It's probably quite nice in the shower gel. But I think as a perfume, this would drive me absolutely nuts. Um, yeah, I really, I think the Divana and Rosemary with the Amber and the Moss, when it's mixed with... The lemon, prosecco, orange and vanilla is just sickly and slightly strange. Um, so, yeah, it's it's unusual. It's interesting, but it's definitely not one that I would recommend buying. Um, yeah, I think this one would be a really a really hard thing to wear, if I'm honest. So there you go. That is the last of the Tito Tondo perfumes. So, yeah, I mean, I think Riso is staying with me. And I'm probably going to enjoy wearing this little sample. And then if I uh, if I really fall in love with this one, I might be tempted to buy um, a full bottle of it. Because again, they're only about £26. And also then if I were to order from FR Moda again, then I could get some more samples of the other Tuto Tondo perfumes I haven't smelled before. That would be really fun. And if I do, I promise I will update you guys. So anyway, I hope that you guys found this helpful. Um, if you've been looking at Tuto Tondo, I would definitely, you know, if I'm sure if you know what you like, then you're going to work out whether you'll like the ones that I didn't. But yeah, for me, Riso and Fico de India are the nicest ones I've smelt from this range. I think they're really, really pretty. They're super affordable. They're going to be perfect for warmer weather. Um, Fico de India, I think especially, is going to be so good in the warm weather. So yeah, um, I'd be really interesting to, to smell uh, some of the fresher ones that they've got and the less gourmandy kind of sweet ones that they have. Um, anyway, let me know if you have any of these and I will see you guys another time. Thanks for watching. Bye.